Maharaj, you need a laptop for... I, I don't need. Oh, okay. Just in case I should try to that. Oh, okay. Go in the of that. Maharaj, you should be able to see. The no, I can see. I can see. Maharaj, please accept the number of the census. I'm good. I'm ready to go. Are we ready to go? Can I just do You can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you are sure. My obeisance is to your Lord Sweet Allah Shropad. In very, very honored to have you, Maharaj. And so if you can, like one or two minutes, you know, devotees, they'll connect you to Facebook Live. That way, I know you are not only present on Zoom, but also Facebook. And then the, that will give the opportunity to guests also join and uh, uh, simultaneously listen, listen from you. It's now one o'clock. Yes, mother, you can start. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We're accustomed to calling the Sunday program our Sunday feast, but this is Sunday feast without the feast. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, Mara, you know, if you give one minute, I will, I mean, you don't need introduction, but uh, so devotees, thank you very much for coming and joining the Sunday Feast program. Very honored to have uh, uh, His Holiness Rambha Swami Maharaj today, you know, very grateful to him. You know, 1969, uh, His Holiness Rambha Swami met Sri Prabhupada the founder Acharya for International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Um, now, he's, 
happy to be with you all. <laughs> Krishna's mercy. Thank you very much. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Yes, ma'am. Please start then. Thank you. Um, I've been spending the last maybe two months discussing topics from 10th Canto Bhagavatam, Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, and a little change of pace. We're going to go to Ram's place of pastimes in South India. Uh, part of the inspiration is not just a change of pace, but something that's fascinating to everybody um, that's been a little bit familiar with um, Vedic literature as Ram's pastimes. They're very charming, very sweet, and very attractive. So one of the places that Somebody can mute your phone because it's making, there we go, okay, uh, or computer. So during this past car last year, 2019, we visited um, places of Ramchandra's pastimes, Nasik, the Dandak Forest, and then further down south in Kishkinda, Kanda. And Humpy is the place, um, we'll see a picture on the map shortly, where it is, we'll maybe we'll just go there. There's a map of parts of South India. In the state of Karnatak, you see on the left side of your screen, uh, there's Udupi, there's an arrow pointing to Udupi, and northeast of that, maybe around one o'clock direction, is Hastet and Humpy. And uh, they're going to make some connection between Udupi, that's the place of Madhvacharya, and uh, Humpy. In fact, um, our next slide shows that the Narahari Tirtha Samadhi, Narahari Tirtha, was a direct disciple of Madhvacharya and a very significant personality in Madhvacharya's line, and his Samadhi is in Humpi, not in Udupi. There's a strong connection, you'll see as we go along, uh, between Madhva's line and the place of Ramchandra's pastimes and Hanuman, etc., in Humpi. A little bit about Nada Hari Tirtha. Um, he, although he was a disciple of Madhvacharya, he was in a, a royal position, an advisor, a minister to a king that ruled in the uh, area of Samachalam. Nada Hari wanted, like others, to take sannyas. Madhvacharya didn't permit that till later on. He wanted him to stay in that position and eventually he received from the king the deities that were original deities of Sita and Ram, etc. <clears throat> they were eventually brought to Udupi and there they're worshipped. Very um, important uh, link to the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. So his samadhi is here. Nada Hari Tirtha Samadhi in Humpy. And um, Humpy is a village in northern Karnataka state. Uh, it's connected with Kishkindakanda, or the kingdom where the Vanaras made their headquarters, where Ram and Hanuman first met, etc. We're going to see some of those places. Um, there's some information here about the origin of this name Humpy. When we read Ramayana, we hear about Lake Pampa again and again. And Lake Pampa is the old name for the Tungabhadra River. Um, and the uh, Humpy is on the, the river bank 
of the Tungabhadra River. So we're going to be visiting four places. Um, unfortunately, you don't have this font that shows things correctly, but that's the way it is. Anjanadri Hill or is the uh, home of where Hanuman was born, the son of Anjana. And uh, something's wrong with this computer. The second place is the Yantro Dharaka Hanuman Temple. And the rest is just going right off the screen. I think I'm going to have to get my computer. Technology is great when it works. <laughs> and it's really frustrating when it doesn't. Okay. Um, Yantro Dharaka, Yantro Dharaka, Hanuman, a really nice place. I'll tell you some stories about that place. And the Koda, da, Koda Kodan Dharama Temple is the next place. You can't see it on your screen, but I can. And there's a Dittala temple in Hampi. We'll see some images of all these places. Um, the first place we're going to take a look at is Anjanadri Hill. There we go. Uh, and there's a temple, Anjaneya, temple at the top of the hill. Adri, of course, as you know, it means um, hill. And here's an image of the hill. This is from the humpy side of the Tungabhadra River, and on the other side is the hill. And if you see that winding white ribbon going up the side of the hill, it's only 555 steps to go from the bottom all the way to the top, here's a, a closer image. If you look in the, the lower central portion, that's where the, the, the steps begin. We're going to see a close up of that. And if you wander the white line going up, 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 along the line going up, there's a cave or a place that was um, the, the place of Hanuman's father his his residence at the very bottom of the hill there's this entrance that you see um parvat is also another name for hill anjana parvat and um this is the entrance place where our devotees went up and you see in the center upper portion that's there's a railing as you walk up going up and up, 555 steps worth. Here is from the top looking down. It's a long climb. We had young and old and in between people going all the way to the top. No, super old couldn't do it, but on the right hand side, um, you see how steep the climb is and the very, very top uh, there is a temple, and we're going to take a look at the temple in just a moment. Here is the temple at the top of the hill. There is a deity of Hanuman <clears throat> that's carved on a rock at the top of the hill. And Anjana has Hanuman. I didn't go there. I was busy preparing for the Yatra, so my understanding is they don't let you take pictures, but she, uh, Anjana has Hanuman on her lap. Here's a, a drone photograph from up above, an aerial view. So there's what the top of the hill looks like. It's a little 
flat, but up, 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 and at 555 steps. The, the, the feedback from the devotees that attended the yatra, when I asked what was the best part, there were, there were two top winners. One of them was climbing up all those steps. <laughs> and when they got to the top, it was well worth it. The um, architecture of the temple is very, very old. And there's a kind of sense of eternity up there. there the intimacy with Hanuman and Anjana. Now, the history of how all this happened, how um, Hanuman began to take part in the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra goes back to Balakanda in Ramayana. And it's, because I like Ramayana, I'm going to read two sections. But the, the, what lead up is, um, on the one hand, Dasrath was in great anxiety, he had no son, so he enlisted uh, Rishishringa to perform the yagya, and when the yagya was being performed the, um, at that very time in the heavenly realms, the demigods had approached Lord Vishnu, as you see in this. Whoops, I don't see it yet. Um, the shore of the Milk Ocean, requesting Lord Vishnu to help protect them from Ravana. And uh, the Lord indicated, I shall appear. Please instruct the demigods to also assist me in my pastimes to destroy Ravana and his Rakshasa horde. So I'm going to read now the section when Brahma speaks to the demigods. It's very similar to Krishna's appearance, what Vishnu says to Brahma. When Lord Vishnu manifested himself as the sons of Dasara, the self-born Brahma said to the demigods, Vishnu is true to his promise, valiant and our well-wisher. Procreate soldiers and assistance for him with forms that can change at will. They should be conversant with magic spells, grave, swift as the wind in speed, conversant in politics, endowed with intelligence, equal to Lord Vishnu in prowess, indestructible, conversant with devices, endowed with supernatural bodies, knowledgeable about all types of weapons, and like the demigods who partake in the nectar of immortality. And then specifically, in the wombs of the principal Apsaras and Gandharvas, in the daughters of Yakshas and Nagas, in the wombs of bears and Vidyadharis, Kinneries and monkeys beget offspring equal to yourselves in prowess. I have already begotten Jambavan, the chief of the bears, from my mouth. There's Jambavan's an image, anyways. He was born suddenly when I once yawned. So it's at the dawn of creation. <laughs> Hanuman came from his mouth, and that happened before he was sleeping, because when he was sleeping, the two demons, Madhu and Kaitava, tried to steal the Vedas, and Jambavan watched the battle when Vishnu came. So he was, Jambavan's pretty old, but he's saying, as I created Jambavan, you do something similar. Having been thus instructed by Rama, they accepted his command and begot sons in the forms of monkeys. Lord Indra begot Vali. The son begot Sugriva. Brahaspati begot the great monkey named Tara, the most intelligent of all the monkey chiefs. The glorious monkey Ganda Mandana was born as the son of Kuvera the giver of wealth. Vishvakarma begot a great monkey named Nala. 
Agni's son was the glorious Nila, whose splendor was like fire, and it was who surpassed everyone in splendor, fame, and prowess. The two Ashvins, endowed with wealth of physical beauty, personally begot Minda and Dvidvida. Varuna begot the monkey named Sushena. The mighty Parjanya begot Sharabha. And then, from the wind god Vayu was born the glorious monkey named Hanuman, whose body was as strong as a thunderbolt and equal to Garuda in speed. He is the most intelligent and strong of all the various monkeys, the bears, monkeys, and langurs took birth quickly. Each displayed a form, appearance, and prowess like that of the demigod who begot them. They could assume any form at will and were endowed with strength. They could wander wherever they wished. They were like lions and tigers in pride and strength. They could all use boulders as projectiles and mountains as weapons. They all had claws and teeth as weapons and were skilled in the use of various arms. They could shake great mountains and split standing trees by their swift movement. They could agitate the ocean, who is the Lord of rivers. They could enter into the sky and even catch a cloud. They could even capture mad elephants wandering in the jungle. By their yells, they could cause screeching birds to fall. One million such great souled monkeys who could assume any form and lead the monkey troops were born. And the conclusion, all the monkey generals rallied around two brothers, Sugriva, the son of the sun god, and Bali, the son of Indra. Others followed Nala, Nila, and Hanuman. So that's um, in the Balakanda of Ramayana. And then we find that Hanuman becomes the son of Anjana. Now, uh, in another portion of Ramayana, we find that this Anjana was uh, an apsara named Punja Kastala, Punji Kastala. And Punji Kastala, Apsara, uh, had a problem. She was cursed by Durva Samuni. And the, it doesn't say exactly what she did to get the curse of Durva, Durva Samuni, but who knows what that was. He's easily angered. And uh, she took birth on earth as the daughter of another monkey chief named Kunjara. Now, Anjana uh, had similar capacity. She could change shapes, etc. And her beauty was astounding. So one time on the top of this Anjanaidri uh, hill, she was moving about in a human-like form, as you see here. And um, Vayu happened to pass by, and Vayu was very charmed by her beauty. And having been given an order by Brahma, without physical contact of Anjana, but by his mental power and by the power of his wind powers, she became impregnated and she felt her pregnancy and um, Vayu informed her, I haven't violated you, do not worry. A great personality is, as will be born from you. Um, yeah. 
So Hanuman was born as the son of Anjana or Anjaneya. And uh, after his birth, he had these amazing powers. You, you all know the story very well. Um, as a very, very small monkey, he saw the sun in the sky. And he thought the sun was a ball or a fruit. And shh, because the son of Hanuman can travel like Hanuman, he's been like Vayu. And so he went, there's details and details which I'll skip, but Indra checked his movement. And he checked his movement by sending his thunderbolt weapon. Um, and that thunderbolt weapon resulted in Hanuman not being able to continue to travel to the sun, but he fell back to earth. He fell on the side of a mountain. Um, and when he fell on the side of the mountain, he broke his jaw. Some places say when the thunderbolt hit him, he broke his jaw. So his, his jaw became this figure that's the meaning of Hanu, Hanuman, this figure jaw. And when he came in for a crash landing on the mountainside, his father became very disturbed. And so the movement of air, not only on the earth planet, but within the universe, stopped. And that caused a problem. So uh, headed by Lord Brahma, you can see in this picture, the demigods came to bless Hanuman. And I'm going to read, this is a very nice section. Um, His father, Vayu, witnessing the fall, was furious and stopped blowing in all the three worlds. Alarmed at this and trying to appease his father, Brahma granted Hanuman that he will be inviolable to all weapons of war. So they came and assembled where Hanuman was. Brahma said, listen, O gods, as I tell you about this Vanara, he will accomplish your purpose on earth and become a famous servant of Vishnu. You should therefore all grant him boons. And they all look up to Brahma, whatever Brahma says is not questioned. Indra, who sent the thunderbolt, took off his garland and placed it around Hanuman's neck, saying, from this day on, he shall be invulnerable to my thunderbolt because his jaw or Hanu was broken by my thunderbolt. He shall be known by the name Hanuman. He of the great jaw. The sun God then said, I shall bestow upon him a hundredth part of my brilliance. And that's still a lot. <laughs> also, when he begins to study the scriptures, I shall enable him to quickly learn all aspects of knowledge. None shall exceed him in scriptural understanding. He will become exceedingly eloquent, which comes in handy later. Yamaraj granted him invulnerability to his rod, freedom from ailment, and the boon of never losing heart in battle. Keeps getting, it gets better. Kovera also blessed him that he would remain unwearied in battle. Shiva said, he shall remain immune to my all my weapons and from death at my hands. Vishwakarma added, this Vanra shall be invulnerable to all celestial weapons forged by me, and he shall be long lived. Finally, Brahma said, I hope you're happy, Vayu. <laughs> no, I get that what he said. Your son shall be invincible in battle. He will prove the terror of 
his foes and shelter of his friends, this jewel among monkeys shall be able to change his form at will and go wherever he pleases at any speed he likes. Please mute your, your computer or whatever you're using. No Brahman is cursed. This becomes important. No Brahman is cursed will be able to kill him and he will be immune to all chastisements on the part of the Brahmanas. Yay. <laughs> His movements shall be unimpeded and he will be glorious in war. He will accomplish tremendous feats which make one's hair stand on end and thus causing destruction of Ravana and the pleasure of Ram. Indra was so relieved to see him smiling, even after the injury, that he gave him the best boon of all, declaring his disappearance will come at his own will. And he didn't will it, so he's still King Purusha Varsha. He will be as swift as Garuda and as powerful as Vayu. He will also be called Anjaneya due to him being born as the son of Anjana. You are the peer of Lord Vayu in valor, speed, splendor, and unimpeded will. Hanuman and Garuda are twins in might and ability. So he's just this little monkey and he's piled up with all these benedictions. So what happened was, being little, he did what little persons do. He was making mischief. He'd go to where the brahmanas were performing their yagyas, and he'd turn things upside down and steal things and, you know, make mischief. And they didn't want to violate Brahma's benediction. So they made a, they made a clever arrangement. He'll forget his powers <laughs> until that time comes when somebody reminds him and then he'll remember. And that's, that happens later in Ramayana. Jalavan reminds him and then his powers are restored. So that's one of the places that we visited. I personally had never even heard of Humpy. We said they would suggest that we go there. I was like, huh? What's that? <laughs> you know, being ignorant. And uh, it's a very, very special place. And in many, in, in more ways than one, we'll see a few more. Um, the next place is Yantra or Yantro Dharaka, Hanuman Temple in Hampi. Here's um, the local sign showing this away to the Yantro Dharaka. Anjaneya Temple. And it is said that this is the place where Hanuman first saw Lord Ram and Lakran. So you're coming down from the, the mountain on which they were residing with Subriva. And there's a very beautiful set of deities. There's a, as you see, long set of steps going up, 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 up. Um, it's considered a very sacred place in Hampi. Um, and we'll hear some more about why it's considered so sacred. Uh, it's on the bank of the Tungabhadra River. And we saw the set of steps leading up. On, in the center or the left of the temple entrance is um, an image of the deity that's inside the temple. As you see, circum surrounding in yellow, there are 12 monkeys that are holding on to the tail of the previous monkey and so forth. Uh, it's a yantra, that's why it's yantra. That. So it's a, that's the form of the deity, is the deity of Hanuman in the center, is at the center of the yantra. So the, the history 
of this temple goes like this. Um, then we're going to get a little bit of a description of um, the Madhva Sampradaya, if you don't mind. Um, you saw that image of where Udupi is and northeast direction is where Hampi is. So Vyasa Tirtha is sometimes described as being um, the revivalist of Madhvacharya's line. He appeared something like 220 years after him. Yeah, that's the appearance day was 220 years apart. Uh, but the, the, there was certainly a line of disciplic succession, but the preeminence of Madhva's teachings took a big rise when it came to Vyasa Tirtha and his member, membership in the line of disciplic succession. So Hampi was a place where he came to visit, considered a sacred place. And um, there was a, a pastime that occurred between him and Hanuman and between him and Madhvacharya. In his meditations, Hanuman appeared like regularly, a certain image of Hanuman that eventually became the image of the deity. So uh, one evening, he received an instruction from Madhvacharya that he should make a temple for Hanuman. And there's a, not, this is a painting of the instruction, but they didn't physically happen because of the years of separation, but he instructed him in a dream. So the next day, um, this, image of Hanuman that was appearing in his meditation, he used a piece of charcoal on a rock to form that image of Hanuman. We'll see a closer up image of Hanuman. And at the end of his puja, the charcoal disappeared. And the same thing happened the next day and the same thing happened the next day. And the same thing happened for 12 days the image of Hanuman disappeared. So at the end of the 12th day, when the image disappeared, he offered a prayer to Hanuman, please show yourself to me. And Hanuman showed himself to Vyasa Tirtha. And um, so he then made, on the instruction of Madhvacharya to do so, he made a yantra, resembling the image that he saw in his meditation. So in the central part, we'll see a closer image of Hanuman in a meditation pose. There's a six-sided yantra and uh, the perimeter around the yantra, there's bija syllables, but um, not so clear, but that's the, that's the stone he had the deity carved in. Here's a, a close-up of the deity. He's holding meditation beads in his right hand, sitting in a yoga posture. And that's the image that he saw, and that's the form that Hanuman showed him, and that's the deity at this place. Um, our, the devotees that visited this place really felt something. They all shared it with me. Uh, and here is a, a closer image of a drawing, not the actual rock, but there's beach of syllables all around in that circle. There's the 12 monkeys holding the previous monkey's tail, indicating the 12 days that Hanuman appeared. And in the meditation pose, and I don't know what the rest of it says in the local language surrounding, but it's, it's a yantra. It's a yantra. We know about yantras from Brahma Samhita. It's something that Brahma used along with chanting his mantra and meditated upon the yantra. The yantra means um, a two-dimensional depiction of 
um, a spiritual abode, the, the spiritual realm used in worship. So that was Vyasa Tirtha's worship. Here's an image on Chandan Yatra and one of the um, six sided or hexagonal images is above his head and he's very nicely decorated in um, Chandan. Then there's this very nice story, just something embellishment about Vyasa Tirtha's life. He didn't always stay in Hampi. His primary place of residence was Udupi. And he was the, old, the successor of Chari in the, in the line. And so one time during a meeting with largely the Brahmana and renunciate followers of Vyasa Tirtha, um, one very simple man, uh, an agriculturalist came in their assembly and in a very humble way, but kind of persistent way, he wanted Diksha. And the Brahmanas were kind of like, who is this guy? And they were a little proud of their attainments and their birth and so forth. And they were very surprised that uh, Vyasa Chirtha didn't hold the same regard. Rather, um, he gave him the request to chant and meditate upon the name of Yamaraja's bull. Yamaraja's bull is named Mahisha. So the farmer went away and after some time, some days passed, doesn't say how many days, he came back and just outside the temple room was Yamaraja's bull, Mahisha. <laughs> he called his name and he came. And then he asked him, uh, now what should I do, Swamiji? <laughs> and um, Vyasa Tirtha pointed out over there in, in the river, there's this very, very, very large, as big as an island rock. And it's placed in such a way that the water isn't going to the agricultural fields. Get Mahisha to move the rock. So he instructed Mahisha, the bull, to move the rock. And he immersed himself in the water to you know, take hundreds of men to move the rock. And he just lifted the rock and moved it out of the way. And then the water flowed to the agricultural fields. Then he came back to Vyasa Tirtha and said, is there any more service for me? Akisha went back to Yamarasha's abode, that mission accomplished. And he said, yes, you can take care of the Gosha. So that was suited activity for an agriculturist. He was giving services suited to his psychophysical nature. And so he was taking care of the, the cows and the Gosha. And then on a, on a festival day, there was um, supposed to be, you know, mantras and tantras, and then an abhishek. And when it came time for the abhishek, Uddhavi Krishna disappeared. He just like, poof, he disappeared. And everyone was wondering, what happened? What happened? And Vyasa Tirtha asked them, what do you think? And they said, because this, this is Krishna, and Krishna was going to be bathed in substances that came from cows, taken care of by this fellow. This, this medical activity to do Abhishek, but the, the, this other fellow was taking care of the cows. So we think he left because of that. He didn't say anything. He just moved his head like this, like, follow me. And they followed him, they went to the Goshal, and there was the farmer with a brush uh, cleaning the cows, and the person holding the bucket was Uddhavi Krishna, according to this local story. Um, and Vyasa Tirasa's description, Needless to say, all of his disciples were amazed that Buddha Krishna personally served this non-Brahman farmer 
Kadiyasa Tirtha explained, the Lord has come to serve his pure devotee. Previously, he came for Acharya Madhva to have him glorified. And now he has found another worthy soul. And after some time, Vyasa Tirtha gave him initiation. Now, looking at the disciplic line, a Madhvacharya, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the line of Madhvacharya, we know who Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's initiating spiritual master is. Hussein. Ishwara Puri. And Ishwara Puri had a spiritual master. His spiritual master was Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri's spiritual master was Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. Lakshmi Pati Tirtha's spiritual master was Vyasa Tirtha. But you might be interested to know, I was, they were contemporaries. The birth date of Vyasa Tirtha is 1460, and the birth date of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was 1486. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was born when Vyasa Tirtha was 26. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's departure was five, five years before Vyasa Tirtha's departure. They were contemporaries. Interesting. Very interesting. Which means in between Lakshmi Pati Tirtha, Madhavendra Puri, Ishwar Puri, their dates are not given in the distinctive line. Um, but uh, very important personality in Madhva's line and very important personality in Humpy and a very strong connection between Udupi the Madhva's line in Udupi, or Madhva's line in Humpy. Here's a, I found this online. It's a image of Mahisha. It's, the diacritics aren't showing properly because it's the wrong font, but it's, it's an S, Mahisha. So that's Yamaraj and his bull carrier. And here's, um, interestingly, this is in China, in Chinese Buddhism, they also honor Yamaraj. Chinese Buddhism honors Yamaraj and Mahisha, his bull carrier. So that's the second place. Uh, here's a, a nice image also of Udupi Krishna, who um, was being bathed but suddenly disappeared and then went to serve the farmer. Another um, Nice image of Udupi Krishna, pictured here. And uh, this is an image showing, meant to show anyways, the farmer taking care of the, the cleanliness of the cows and the Udupi Goshal. So from that stairway, that we saw the image of walking up the Yantro Daka Hanuman Temple, Yantro Dharaka Temple. Down below to the right, you'll see another temple. Now, the devotees that, that visited these places described the following to me, the Chinese devotees. They went inside this Kan Kodang Kodanda Ram Temple and they felt transported. They felt they were in the presence of Lord Ramachandra. And it's a very special place. It's a place where um, Sugriva uh, first met Ram. That this term Kodanda, oh, Kodanda Rama, Kodanda has different meanings in the morning or the dawn period, or it can mean one who is lovable or the richest of the rich. So that's the meaning of Kodanda. And uh, it's a place where Sugriva first met Ram, very close to the place where Hanuman first met Ram. 
and uh, the deity inside shows or show you Somebody has to mute that mic. Please mute your mic. Thank you very much. Um, some say it's not where they first met. Some say it's where Sugriva was crowned, but there's a Sugriva deity inside the, the temple. Um, and we see him on our left or the deity is right and he's bowing his head before Lakshman and this lake or bathing god in the front celebrated as Chakra Tirtha it's before you get to the Tungabhadra river so exactly how it works not so clear but um, the, the deities are certainly very very special very beautiful um, there we go. So they're carved on the stone and over, as you see, on our left or the deity's right by the side of Lakshmana, that's Sugriva with his head bowed. And by Lakshman's side is Kodandaram. And then there's Sita. We'll get some closer images of these deities. And there's Sugriva with his head bowed before Lakshman. Lakshman standing very straight and tall. And next to him is Lord Ramachandra in the middle, Kodanda Ram. And then by his side is Sita with a big smile. So I'll say it again, that the devotees, I heard this from three different sets of devotees, but because they were completely new to everything, the Chinese devotees being there said, not just one of them, they felt they were in the presence of Lord Ramachandra. There was something mysterious or mystical or charming or enchanting being in front of Ram and Sita and Lakshman and Sugriva. And then when they walked out, whole herd of cows came. They felt like they were, they were in Vrindavan. <laughs> like they lost sense of where they were. They weren't happy, but they, it's a, it's a very, very, very beautiful place. Very simple, as you can see, not commercial and anything like that. And the last place we're going to visit is this one. Um, there's a temple of Lord Vitala in Hampi. And it's a historical site. This is a recent photograph taken from a drone of uh, the wall surrounding. And it was partially destroyed by some Muslim rulers. And on the back side, that's the Tungabhadra River. And um, there's no deities there because it's a partially destroyed place, but it was once, who can imagine a very, uh, it's a very, very special place. And, oops, you didn't see the image. There's the image. In the back, there's the Tungabad River. It looks like there's this line of, I mean, no one said this, but it just looks like windmills. There's a line of white. And those islands that are in the background looks like windmills. In any case, there's the Lord Vitala Temple in Humpy. Now, we visited the deity of Vitaleshwara during the course of this yatra. And um, it was a very nice experience. And the, the final image here is, we'll toggle back. Look in the, the, in the center of that boundary wall of the temple area, you see there's a smaller image that's a, a chariot. And there's the main gate and just above the main gate, there's a smaller stone structure. That's this one. It's a one stone carving of a chariot. Very celebrated image. There's different images. You can find them online if you like. Um, the devotees were really awed by the whole place, although 
there aren't deities, there wasn't a big crowd of people and all of that kind of thing. But, um, you know, the, the historicity, the, the, the sense of you're going back in time and you're with Hanuman and with Ram and with the Lord Vitala. Hampi is um, fortunately not a very celebrated place. That means it's not overcrowded with tourists, but it's, it's very um, inspiring, spiritually inspiring place. The, the feedback that I got from people that had never been to India before, particularly the Chinese, but some others had never been to India before, the darshan of Lord Vitala and climbing up those 555 steps and the, the architecture and seeing the, the deity of Anjana and Hanuman, it was the, the highlight. So um, here's a, one more close up of the chariot. Hard to believe, but who, know how, who knows how long, how many carvers it took to make this. And uh, this, this is just a small part of what we experienced when we went to uh, Hampi and the whole of the Kishkinda Kanda section of Ramayana. Um, for those of you that haven't seen it, uh, the next slide is a little um, video that Prahlad Shringa made, teenager to speak about what we're doing. And I think you're gonna have to uh, adjust, turn this thing on from your computer because it won't just change by clicking it. This is the Ayodhya Yatra that we did the previous year. And then we went to Nasik. Pandarpur, where Vikram is, then a long bus ride to Humpy, entering into the past times of Vodhana. In case some of you may not know, there's been, for about nine months, nine to ten months, there's been a group of devotees working on preparing all the research. Just the, the subject matter that we'll be discussing and an estimated 1,500 hours of devotee volunteer time was invested in that research work. Transition from the position of being a dacoit to the foremost exalted devotee. The Ram is in the heat of battle. He cuts off the arms of Dushana and <clears throat> all the remaining 5,000 soldiers are also annihilated. Describing the 18 meanings behind the blade of grass placed between Sita and Ram, Sita, Sita and Radha. Obstacles on the way over, 
and then launched me when I got here. Now, what's next? And he's considering very thoughtfully, carefully, the stuff for Hanuman. Because he, he's always in this orientation towards Ram's mission. Not his lower nature, the anger thing, or whatever the other things are that we also deal with. Just in place to have a clear time, huh? <laughs> but it's going to be a long time before we're going to be able to do that kind of thing again. <laughs> Let's see what Mr. Corona has to say. <clears throat> so um, it doesn't show because of technology, but there's both the, the, the Ayodhya and then following that, the Dandak Yatra, um, they're available. You can just go online and receive them. Um, I'll just read. And if you're interested, you can find out from the organizers from Yugo Kishore or something. Ramapadaswamimedia.com slash shop one, the number one, Ramapadaswami media.com slash shop one. So that they'll send you, um, there's a donation involved, but they'll send you the, um, these videos of all these lectures on the whole presentation. And we didn't have PowerPoint in uh, Humpy, <laughs> just had a microphone. But uh, the images, I think, are nice. And, and in what you, those that have this already will receive it, the images that you saw, they're there in that flash drive. Or when you download it, it'll come to you. The deities, Anjaneya, Adri, and so forth, everything. So um, that's it. I extended my time. I hope that's okay. And if there's any discussion, we can hear some questions, I think. You'll go to sure there's time. You can unmute yourself. Maharaj is amazing and uh, uh, Thank you very much for for sharing this, uh, you know, wonderful yatra and experiences. So I request all the devotees, you know, um, so you have seen, and if you want to see more, and as mentioned uh, uh, by Maharaj, you know, um, you can you can treasure these experiences by, you know, by making a small uh, uh, donation and decorate this. So I request devotees to. Please do this. But Maharaj, once again, thank you very much for, you know, taking time and Maharaj doing this. Very grateful, actually. Three different Having a Sunday feast. <laughs> Maharaj, request devotees, please mute, you know. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, please tell. So I, maybe the technology isn't going to cooperate with us. So we'll maybe just call it a, uh, a day. And um, you're welcome to join our class this morning and evening. We're having a blast discussing Krishna in Vrindavan. If you like Krishna stories and you like to hear the sweetness of our acharyas describing what's going on, please join us. We welcome you. Maharaj, just I have a question. You, know, you said uh, 
rambaswamimedia.com so how this, how this will happen when they would is uh, make a donation online uh, then uh, i mean they have to go to this website you go yes. to the website you know rambaswamimedia.com slash shop shop number 1 you know just one the, the digit one shop one and then it, it gives i i haven't done it but i'm sure that they'll be able to figure it out anybody can get that far can figure it out <laughs> <laughs> okay yes ma'am sure so devot is a request everyone you know that actually that message bador mara said it is displayed at the bottom rambaswamimedia.com slash shop one that's where uh, you know we get the opportunity to to acquire this and uh, uh, you know i request all of you to please do it but uh, thank you very much and also maharaj is doing classes morning and evening and uh, it's morning 7:30 and evening 6:30 and uh, i encourage all of you devotees to please join this online classes thank you hari krishna see the prabhupad ki jai jai jai